when these first came on the market, the, you could buy a 246 Dino Ferrari cheaper, and an E-Type Jag was three and a half thousand. So they were well up there. They're very expensive car. Hi, I'm Paul Nelson, and this is my 1972 BMW E9. Upgraded engine, a uh, B34, uh, and it's fuel injected with the Utronics uh, fuel injection management system. This car has been completed one year now and it took me two and a half years. Um, as I said earlier, body uh, off rotisserie restoration. originally was delivered in Germany and was Polaris Silver uh, and then uh, in 1983 it went to California where it had an engine change for an unknown reason and a colour change to Fjord Blue. When I got it I bought it from a chap in Canberra and uh, it was shipped up to the Gold Coast here and we started work on it. Um, so and here it is what you see in the background. is uh, Turkish metallic which is German for turquoise metallic um, it was 750 hours of uh, body fabrication work because it had moderate rust these cars were renowned for uh, rust they were built by the Carmen uh, body company for BMW uh, the engine is a uh, B34 three and a half liter engine which has been fuel injected so the badge on the rear reads 3.5 got a five-speed uh, jet drag gearbox manual. Um, the upholstery inside is uh, German Nappa leather um, and it's been dynamated throughout, rhino coated the whole car inside and out in the roof and the engine bay. Uh, the rims were restored by a guy in California. Um, BBS RS rims are very hard to get these days. Um, this guy actually refurbished them and they were shipped over to me here on the Gold Coast. Um, the spray job took um, 250 man hours. So that was cleaning up the body, getting it shaped up, ready for spraying and, in, and the spraying. This is my 
seventh uh, classic car. Um, my first was an Austin Healey Sprite, then an MGB, um, a 59 Cadillac, um, a Mustang GT factory uh, fastback, uh, 65 Corvette Stingray, um, a Pagoda Roof Benz, which I still have, and of course the E9. in cars from a young teenager and in fact I can remember when these cars uh, the E9s were in the financial review advertised back in 1973 for seventeen and a half thousand dollars which was a lot of money then for a car you could buy a 246 Dino Ferrari cheaper and an E-Type Jag was three and a half thousand so they were well up there, they're very expensive car. They were basically a Grand Tourer and um, they really put uh, BMW on the map for um, tour car racing. CSI uh, would have been 140 mile an hour car off the showroom floor. I don't know what this would do now because it's a very light car with a lot more power. I first got an interest in uh, classic cars um, when I was a kid at school reading sports car graphic. Um, that's what maintained my uh, uh, interest. I always wanted to get a Sunbeam Alpine but never ever did. But um, my previous couple of cars from these were American cars um, but I've moved away from American cars now and as I said I've got just this and the Pagoda Roof Benz which are uh, two differences really. I mean the Pagoda Benz is a really laid-back ultimate boulevard cruiser. German cars now. Um, there's the Pagoda Roof Benz and the E9 and they complement each other because the uh, Pagoda Roof is a, a real cruisy machine. 
fat I think it's the ultimate boulevard cruiser whereas the E9's got more sting in it and it wants to go um, and again two different modes of motoring I think but uh, yeah I never ever thought of them as an E9. To me, they were always a three-liter CS or a CSI. But a friend of mine was at an auction, and he saw one there for, that went for sale, and he mentioned it to me. And I thought, oh yeah, I, I've always liked them. So um, I was looking around for another car to do, and um, so I started. Mm -hmm. 